Section 10.1, example 3. So it may be impossible to find the general term of a sequence an. So in the previous example, we found that formula for the general term. Um, we will not always be able to do that. So an example would be a sequence. Um, if the general term is the nth digit of the decimal representation of square root 2. So there won't be a nice formula for this one. We'll just list out the first five terms. So go ahead and find square root of 2 on your calculator, and then I'll show you how to turn this into a sequence. So I got 1.414213562, and then it keeps going. Um, depending on your calculator, it'll have a different amount of decimal places. And so the sequence is just the digits. So the first one is 1, second one is 4, 1, 4, 2. Those will be my first five terms. And there's no nice formula for the an term here. So that's it, we'll just list it. Um, another way we like to write um, equations for sequences is called a recurrence relation. So a recurrence relation is when you write it in terms of the previous terms rather than a general term. So an example is maybe we set a1 equal to one and then the next term an plus 1 would be the previous term, an plus 2. So that's a recurrence relation. So sometimes we use an plus 1, other times we use an, um, but they're both doing the same thing. They're using previous terms. So some examples are below. So we'll start with the Fibonacci sequence. Um, if you have time to Google it, it actually has a lot of applications that you may see in future math classes. Um, but for now, we're just defining it as a sequence. But it tends to it actually fits a lot of patterns in nature. So this is telling me that a n is equal to a n minus 1. So that's another way of saying previous term. And then a n minus 2 would be the previous previous term. So let's see what that means. So we already have the first two terms. We know a1 and a2 are one, both 1. And then a n... So a3 will be a3 minus 1, so a2, and then 3 minus 2 is 1, so a2 plus a1. So it's the previous term and then the previous previous term. So then a4 would be 4 minus 1, so a3 plus a2. And then we'll maybe see a pattern shortly. So we get 1, we get 1. So a2 plus a1 would be 1 plus 1, or 2. So then a4 would be 2 plus 3, or sorry, 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then maybe we can see the pattern without the formula now. So we got 2 from doing 1 plus 1. We got 3 from doing 1 plus 2. So then my next term would be 2 plus 3, or 5. And then my next term would be 3 plus 5, or 8. Just adding the previous two terms. And then we get 5 plus 8, which is 13. We'll do just a couple more. So then the next one would be 8 plus 13, or 21. So you're just adding the two terms before. And it just keeps going and going. There is no nice general term here. Um, there's only a recurrence relation. Let's try some more. Um, so let's find our recurrence relation that generates 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. So we're going to start with um, A1 is 5, and then A2 is 8. So how can I write 8 in terms of 5? It looks like it would be 5 plus 3. So that would be A1 plus 3. Let's see if that pattern continues. So then a3 in terms of the previous term, 11 would be 8 plus 3. Yeah, so that plus 3 seems to continue. So a2 plus 3. So that's a recurrence relation. So we'll say a1 equals 5, and then we'll say an equals an minus 1 plus 3. And that's my recurrence. Um, sometimes we use an plus 1 instead, and that's fine. Um, we're still using the previous term, so the previous term for n plus 1 would be an. So let's list the first five terms where we have a sequence. a1 is 1, 
and then a n plus one, so then we'll jump to two, because that would be next, would be n times a n. So that would be one times a one. And then a three would be two times a two. A four would be three times a three. And then a five would be four times a four. So let's figure out what these are. So one times a one would just be one times one, which is one. Two times a two would be two times one, which is two. Three would be what? Three times two or three. And then a five would be four times, oops, that was six, would be four times six, or four times three times two, or four times six or 24. So we get one, one, two, six, 24 for the first five terms. And this leads us to this new thing called a factorial. Um, maybe we've seen these before. So when we multiply four times three times two, and then there's a hidden one, that's called four factorial. It has an explanation mark. So three times two times one is three factorial. So that's a pattern we might start to see when we do more sequences in series. Um, series will be next. Um, so n factorial will be n times n minus one, and then you just keep going. So you hit one, you just multiply all those numbers. So that's a new thing that we might see. It's called a factorial.